Hi, I'm Matt Kestenbaum, Chief Medical Officer at Capital Caring Health and the medical lead for our incident command team for COVID-19. Keith Everett, Chief Officer of Performance, Culture Operations and Compliance and Incident Commander for COVID-19. So that's an interesting question because there's really no right answer. Uh, for us, we really wanted to focus on two things. Uh, one being uh, keeping our patients and our families and our staff safe. And then second, making sure that we maintain uh, our overall operations. And so with that, we set up a structure where we had a medical clinical lead as Dr. Matt Kestenbaum introduced himself, then also focusing on administrative and planning, logistics, HR finance, communications, incident resources for procurement, and then government processes. From my perspective, there were three big challenges in terms of mobilizing capital caring health. I think the biggest was obtaining a large enough supply of PPE, uh, specifically masks, and then getting staff fit tested for those N95s that we were able to obtain. You know, because we received so many different kinds of masks, it seemed that we were on a never ending cycle of fit testing. Um, we were very fortunate to have obtained, I think, just enough of what we needed to keep our staff safe, uh, either by purchasing equipment or by having our wonderful volunteer team make what we needed. Um, that included the volunteers mobilizing to make hundreds of face shields and reusable gowns. The second challenge uh, was moving many of our clinical visits to a virtual visit platform. And frankly, that should have been a larger challenge than it was. But within a week of our incident command structure being put in place, we had a solution implemented. And lastly, it was a challenge to know exactly what we needed to prepare for. Uh, we thought the hospice portion of our program would be most affected, uh, and we plan to accept hospital overflow into our inpatient units. However, it turned out that hospitals held on to the COVID-19 patients, uh, even those who were dying. So we wound up having to shift staff away from home care and our inpatient units to help with the increased numbers of hospitalized patients who needed either a palliative care consult or a hospice referral. In fact, our staff was asked to obtain emergency privileges at some local hospitals to assist with virtual consults. We were able to accomplish that in a matter of days and help our hospital-based colleagues deal with the patient surge. takeaway uh, in terms of learning to manage during a pandemic is that communication is critical. Uh, I spent the first week of the pandemic making calls to every member of our medical staff. I know other leaders in the organization did the same uh, for their departments. I personally wanted to gauge how each of our doctors and nurse practitioners were doing, how they were feeling. I wanted to get a sense of how I could lead most effectively. In addition, I sent an update uh, by email almost every evening for two months, uh, notifying them of any new information, new equipment orders, uh, distribution plans for equipment and other items of importance. Uh, we also implemented weekly virtual medical staff meetings uh, where I communicated those same points to everybody, but of course live and with video and that personal connection I think was, was very important. During those meetings, we kept the announcements to a minimum uh, and we had an open forum for thoughts and questions. It was completely unscripted as I wanted the discussion to be organic and, and real. Um, and I also would like to note that we ended each of those meetings with some form of self-care. Uh, sometimes we had musicians join for the last 15 minutes and we had a couple of private uh, concerts. We had a meditation session, uh, but always something along those lines, just so we could all take a collective breath and relax, even if only for a few minutes. Uh, so I'll highlight a couple of things. I actually will go back and step, uh, take a step back and talk about another challenge I think that we had uh, in reference to making sure that we truly interpret the uh, CMS COPs, the conditions of participation appropriately. Uh, I think that's a struggle for any healthcare entity as any new emergency event comes up, there are new rules and regulations that are passed and for us to interpret those and implement those uh, was a challenge in the beginning because there were a lot of changes. Uh, I would say definitely some of the big takeaway, takeaways for me is the commitment of our staff. Uh, we have incredible commitment of our staff to take care of our patients, regardless if they had COVID-19 or not. Uh, and then additionally, just maintaining our true north, uh, our core values of patients and families first, always uh, do the right thing, 
and respecting everyone. And I think by maintaining that true north, we're able to maintain our continuity of services throughout. My first recommendation is to have a plan. Uh, an efficient and effective incident command structure is absolutely critical. Uh, without Keith's leadership, uh, we would not be uh, in the position we are today. Uh, next, uh, communicate the necessary processes and protocols and do that over and over again using multiple formats. We sent emails, we used an electronic learning platform, phone calls, virtual visits, um, and we also established an intranet site where everything we referenced was available to staff. I think the main point here is you cannot over communicate. As a quick example, we developed a visit protocol that reviewed our requirements for virtual versus in-person visits, the screening questions that were required before an in-person visit, and what PPE was needed based on screening and other factors. This was distributed by email, on the intranet, and reviewed with all staff members over and over again. And finally, as part of that plan, particularly from a, a management and leadership perspective, I'd recommend that you validate those processes and protocols you've put in place to make sure they're actually happening in the field. I was very surprised on a few occasions that pieces of the protocol we thought were very clear were actually misinterpreted and instituted incorrectly. We were able to catch that very quickly and correct it, uh, but only because our management team was willing to be in the field with our staff uh, otherwise we would have missed those situations. I would say the only other thing I would add is the importance of making sure you review your process and review your plans. We recently just went through a mid uh, mid incident review where we had an opportunity to really look at what we implemented over the last 200 plus days of being in this incident. You know what went well, what didn't go well, and what are those things that we need to revise considering that we're going to be in this remote state uh, for you know another length of time. So it's really important for you to get a plan, review that plan on an ongoing basis. And I would definitely schedule a team, uh, a moment with your team uh, to really review those things that are working well and what's not working. What, what this pandemic has taught us at Capital Caring Health is that we are highly valuable members of the healthcare community. We've been able to flex and shift to meet the needs of our colleagues across the healthcare continuum including those in the hospital, but more than ever, we see the importance of home care and the delivery of quality home care in keeping people safe and keeping staff safe. Thank you. Thank you for that commitment. Thank you for the services. We are all in this fight together uh, and an opportunity to learn from each other and whatever we can learn from you guys, please be willing to share that. And then whatever we can, whatever we can learn or whatever we can share with you guys, we're more than willing to do that. But really thank them for the commitment and service uh, to all actually all healthcare workers out there who are really fighting this pandemic.